بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب هب لي حكما وألحقني بالصالحين واجعل لي لسان صدق في الآخرين إذا أمضت الدعاء بيت بحضة إبراهيم عليه السلام In a Muslim's life, there are two things. One is effort call it procedure. And the second is to make it happen. Procedure you can. But making it happen, a lot of makes it happen. You can open up a business do the right marketing presentation but who will make the business flourish Allah you can sow the seed right? who will cause the seed to split to sprout to grow and to fruit can you do it right? this intimacy so the egg and the sperm meet, right? But who will allow it to fertilize and to become alive after it? Nobody can do it. If he, is well, if he decides what's happened, it will happen. <coughs> so the best iman is the iman of the Nabi. And therefore Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَدَاهُمُ اللَّهُ فَبِهُدَاهُ مُقْتَدِي Speaks about 17 Anbiya Ali Islam تِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا آتَيْنَاهَا إِبْرَاهِيمًا كُلَّنْ هَدَيْنَا وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي دَعُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَأَيُّوبَ وَيُوسُفَ وَمُوسَى وَهَارُونَ وَزَكَرِيَّا وَيَحْيَا وَعِيسَى وَإِلْيَاسَ so he speaks about them and then he says they are the guided ones and you also follow them address me to Rasul Pak then a particular address directed to Rasul Pak ثُمَّ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ أَنِ اتَّبِعْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا address is directed to Rasul Pak follow the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Hanif is the one that is devoted, left everything else, dedicated and devoted. So be devoted to Allah Ta'ala. So now, the Iman of the Nabi is the most perfect Iman. You can't think of an Iman that is above the Iman of a Nabi. Now the, you see nearly every Nabi is putting procedures together, things together. Whatever, he, whatever procedures he is supposed to be following, but at the end he is begging Allah Ta'ala. Ibrahim al-Islam did everything, and then at the end he says, Rabbana taqabbal minna. Allah must make it happen, you accept this thing. I've done everything now. But that acceptance is your call, it's your decision. Put the bricks of everything we've done. But for this place to be accepted, that's your decision. So, they so spot on in that regard that it can't happen just with our effort. And also, it puts us in the back foot that we don't become overconfident of ourselves. The, again, look at the word Rabbana Taqabbal Minna. Taqabbal is on the version of Tafa'ul. Right? And Tafa'ul has some uh, resemblance with Taqalluf. In other words, it's not done, Allah make it happen. I say make it happen. That's called Taqalluf. Right? So Allah Ta'ala my actions will not warrant will not warrant an acceptance that's what he's saying my actions not warrant an acceptance but oh Allah you make it happen make it accepted 
you grant acceptance. Now, <coughs> to emphasize the point, then Allah Ta'ala brings about His attributes. And you direct your mercy and your attention towards us. You direct your attention and your acceptance towards us. You know, when we go to someone, and what you will say, is see us right. Don't we say that? See me right, please. Boss. Today really now you want to you want you want any job from anybody, boss. Bowser boy, boss A, how is it? So you make him feel big. Now here yeah, it's with conviction in Naka Anta Tawabur Rahim. Okay, you are in Naka Anta with the emphasis in Naka Anta Tawabur Rahim. You're the only one that can make this right, can make it happen. You accept it, Allah Ta'ala. In Naka Anta Tawabur Rahim. If you will focus your attention, your compassion, that will make this work. In the Kantat Tawab Rahim. So there's so much of life in the dua. But then, unfortunately, the dua you make is just a little bit of a, just some words that we are just passing on. Hmm? Some words, some vocabulary that we have learned, and we are just reading it. The dua is not supposed to be read, it's supposed, sub, supposed to be begged. Not read, begged. So, try and learn the meaning, otherwise, read, make the dua in your own language. The attributes of Allah, Allah give it in Arabic. The dua is in the language that you can talk. So you will ask Allah, Allah and you will beseech Him in the honor of His attributes. فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا So you ask Allah to beg him with his attributes. Now, I was thinking, why with his attributes? Because when you're going to be asking with his attributes, it will strengthen your conviction, your confidence in Allah. Allah you will make it happen. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Doesn't it strengthen your conviction? And Allah Ta'ala likes that. أَنْتُمْ مُلِحِينَ فِي الدُّعَى and then, muqinuna bil bil ijaba, that you're making dua with the yakin that Allah is going to accept your dua. So you strengthen that yakin how by using the attributes of Allah. Ta'ala. So you say, ya wasi al fadl. Hmm? So you saying yourself, Allah, what I'm doing, right, what I'm saying, won't make things happen. My deeds won't make it happen. Yes, it is your fadl that will make it happen. Innaka afoon, see how he's starting the dua. Innaka afoon, tuhibbu lafwa. That Allah, you are forgiving. And you like this. So Allah, do forgive. Last week I was speaking, <coughs> no, I was speaking now. Sometimes you lose count who you're speaking here, there. So, after the talk, <coughs> they're all temperaments, temperaments thoughts, etc. And that's why I say the importance of aligning ourselves to our elders. There's a lot of wisdom and a lot of security. But only time will fail. And without the help and the guidance of your elders, then you're taking your own line. You're going one side, you're going something else. There's no security in that. I ask you, why do you make taqlid? Hadith is there, the Quran is there. Why do you make taqlid? You make taqlid because there is some security there. And away from taqlid, you go on. But the need to follow someone, not to become independent, to lead the, you need to follow someone. So I was giving one talk somewhere. After the talk, one person related something from his friend. It was also in the talk. So the Mustabi saying must make, must ask Allah to ask forgiveness for what wrong I have done. Or right, now, to give another talk to explain now, why, what's the need to make istighfar? But you see that diversity in thought. He's a born Muslim, he's got that he's a new Muslim, not a convert, born Muslim. But this is the type of question that he's asking, that, uh, what's the need to make tawbah? What, what wrong have I done? 
Whereas, when you look within yourself, that I don't see anything that's right. You know, the that you perform now, how many of us can, we say, can say that we read it at the level of وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ How many of us can say it? Can any of us? That is his karam and his fuzzle that are broken down things also he's saying on our mind. You could mehnat karte, am isko kubur karte, kush ni. Mere bande, he's trying. He knows that it's all reject, right? He knows that it's reject. But yet, he crowns it with perfection and accepts it. He rabbana taqabbal minna. So he'll crown it with perfection and he will embrace you with acceptance. So you see, every Nabi is doing the same thing. He is begging. This Allah Ta'ala Hume rona si khade. Teach us to cry, to beg and to plead to Allah Ta'ala. That's, that's what we are lacking. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأَسُنَا تَضَرَّعُونَ They are seeing problems. Then why don't they cry? Why don't they come, why don't they come and beg to us? Why don't they do it? See how Allah is complaining. Why don't they, why don't they cry? Well, by now, the wrongs had the better of them, they consumed, and the hearts are hardened. So you'll see the same feature in every Nabi. Ma'am, it's so many so many of his du'as, right? So can you find a Muslim more perfect as a Rabbi. Can you find? And Ibrahim al Islam then being the Abul Ambiya, the father of Ambiya, right? I mean Zuriyati, right? And his progeny, there's so many Ambiya coming up, right? And he's the father of Ambiya, but then when he's the father of Ambiya, can you say that there's any weakness in his Islam? No. But when he's pleading to Allah, Allah the dua, رَبَّنَا وَجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمِينَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ I ask for me and for my progeny that you become proper Muslim Can you see that? He's doing everything building the Kaaba Sharif accepting himself to be thrown into the fire not letting his child do everything what Allah Pak wants but then after everything he still says رَبَّنَا وَجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمِينَ Can you see that? رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا کہ ہم قبولیت کے لائق تو نہیں we are not worthy of acceptance but Allah will make it happen when we look within ourselves what do we deserve and this is not the actual price the word what you get it's not the price it's just a little bit of encouragement right come on eat this take this that's not the price, the price is there. Right? Although the price is there, but you also so much he gives. Dete hai to chappar par ka ke dete hai. He gives, and he gives so much as though he throws open the roof and gives you so much. Right? Ask any of you, do you know how many sets of kurta you got? Do you know? You lost count. Right? Is it the fact or not? Right? Do you know what's in your uh, freezes, huh? How much is in the freezes? Huh? Why if you use the word spewing out? Say, you don't say spewing out, that, that word is not right. Say spilling out is alright. Spewing is a little bit of a dirty, nauseated word, right? Maybe some said this person, don't say khabusat uh, nafsi, say laqisat. That, that thing is, khabusat is a little bit of a hard word. Right? Lucky said this river of a light word. I say spewing out the way my mind goes. Eh? Mind goes somewhere else. Eh? Sometimes some words, some words are because of the person's profession. Right? Like if he says, you know, he's taking a shot in the dark. That person may be an archer or something. So you use the word shot. You can say speculating, you can say take a shot in the dark. So you use to some profession and you use that type of words, right? But anyway, we're talking of dua. And the dua of the Anbiya Ali Muslim and see the life in the dua.
Now one thing, I'm just, uh, I just have to just uh, revise with you. It's better for us, in fact it is safe for us to make du'as that are in conformity with the Quran and Hadith, right? Because some of the du'as we can make may be just pure temptation. What? It may be pure temptation. We don't even realize it. Allah Prophet, you know, you know, I drove this uh, Corolla some time now. Now, uh, what's that other word? Parado. What Parado. Parado, yeah. Allah Prophet, Parado now. So, by the way, you do your work. Isn't it doing your work? Uh, Parado, Allah Prophet, Lexus. Man. See, every, all my friends, my circle got a Lexus. Uh, see, I'm looking like a broken down Johnny. What does he think of me? Allah Prophet, give me Lexus. What is this? So, you don't make that type of du'as. Because there can be a, a combination of nothing. And there can be complications in that. Right? Complications, how they come. Sometimes I will explain these things, these basic things, basic, basic concepts. Right? So there is one Jamil Apa, right? So she is the only Jamil Apa. He is like Miss, Miss, uh, not Spingo or Miss Work, he must be right. A so hundred people are making work with Miss Jamila. Allah Allah, she must be my wife. Now, can it happen? If Allah Bhag accepts everybody's dua, uh, that Jamil Abba will become Kachumar. Isn't it? You'll get one tail end, you'll get a small little bit here, little bit here. Allah Bhag accepts everybody. There's only one Jamil Abba, and everybody wants the same Jamil Abba. What will happen? So that's why I say, rather you make duas that conform with the duas of the Sulay Pak person and the Quran Hadith. Quran and Hadith. So there is no contamination of nafs. And you making other du'as, I don't say it's impermissible, sometimes you can make. But a lot of times, when you're making other du'as, then there's a contamination. There's a nafs and uh, there's a du'a. So nafs and du'a. Nafs and du'a. So therefore, Ibn Atta Iskandari, Rahmatullah, he says, by, although du'a mukhul ibadah, it is the essence of ibadah, but that is for the person who is cleansed from the razail of the nafs. See, the weaknesses, the, the wrongs, the dirt of the nafs has been thrust out of his system. If he is making dua, then there will be no contamination of nafs. Otherwise, you are making dua for all, all worldly things, all tempta- temptations you are making dua for. So you see this dua of the Ambiya Ali Islam, and how beautiful, how exciting. <coughs> He's making a dua, Waj'alli lisana sidqin fil akhirin. Remember Islam, Waj'alli lisana sidqin fil akhirin. Simple explanation is, grant me a good name in the generations to come. Simple translation, right? What? A good name in the generations to come. So now, <coughs> you heard this dua, and then you heard one, one talk in the Tabli Jamaat, no name, no fame. Hey. But this dua is saying, give me a good name in the generation to come. So how do you reconcile? You must have heard, right, from Alim speaking, no, no name, no faith, right? But now you are making dua, وَجْعَلِّي لِسَانَ صِدْقٍ فِي الْآخِرِ Give me a good name in the generations to come. So the Mufassirin explains this, right? It takes a little bit of time to so understand the, the content of this dua. So the name of the fame that the Quran or the Hadith is uh, condemning is what? That worldly name and fame. What? Worldly name and fame. But if, if it is something connected to deen and the hereafter, then it's not a thing that is to be condemned. With three conditions. Now Ghazali says three conditions. One is you got a name, or you want a name, not to boast and brag over people. Not to boast and brag over people. See, I made so much of Khatam, how much he did. Look at my Kirat. What is he? My students, see how they recite. See, he's really broken down. He, he messes all, all Jalsa, he messes it up. See how easy. So what you want to do? You're bragging about, boasting about yourself or your product. Sometimes you are boasting about yourself. Sometimes you are boasting about your product. 
and this thing this not comes in very ajeeb, very unique ways. You think you are doing something dini, but it may be purely dunya, or it may be a contamination, 70% contamination of dunya. So the rest is a, is a very difficult thing. Don't think it's so easy. So the first condition he says, that provided you don't boast and brag about yourself. With that, you don't despise. See me, see my recitation. Let's compare with these people here. See me, and see this person here. So you want the name, but in the process of you achieving the name, either you are boasting or either you are despising someone. Imam Ghazali rules it out by no boasting and no despising. Uh, Shah Sahib Rahmatullahi, he says, you see, uh, there's laws and dini aspects sometimes related to zahir things, right? Things that are occur in namaz, proza, zakat. They, you must refer to the ulama of the zahir. Ulama that has learned the zahir. Because they have got books, fiqh, etc. Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi. Then you got things that are related to spiritual things. Right. Matters of deen, but they are related to the spiritual side, like hasad, takabur, etc. So then you look at the experts that have ex- expertise in spirituality. So therefore I'm quoting Imam, quoting Imam Ghazali Rahmatullahi. It's a very balanced statement. This is, he's got an expertise on zahiri things, and he's specialized in bathiri things. So, the knowledge and the experience, the exposure he has of the bath in this person doesn't have. Or he hasn't written about it. He may have had it, had it, but he didn't write about it. And this person has written about the Zahir, but he has not written about the bath in. Or he doesn't know about it. He doesn't know the details. Maybe he hasn't written, or he doesn't know the details. What a balance. Now, this Mutakaddi means they had this balance. Now, now in this generation there is no balance because my stake is everything what he says is final right. that's the attitude we have and these people in the past alright, he is an expert on the Zahir he is an expert on the Batin I need to get both right get the Zahir right, get the Batin right Hazrat <coughs> Jalaluddin Tanesri Rahmatullahi he was an expert in fiqh, the mufti and uh, some of his kitabs are in our library. I saw it some many, many years ago now. I don't know if it's still there. Our library is not supervised well. Taking a walk, all the kitabs are taking walks. Allah give us someone, librarian. <coughs> so, one person used to go to Shah Abdul Quddus Sabrah Mutalik. Now the Shabdu Quddus Sahib Rahmatullahi was an alim as well, but he wasn't an expert in fiqh. He was an alim, but not an expert in fiqh. So he's, he would also recommend, and people also know it, or he's an alim, but he's not an expert in fiqh, etc. For fiqhi matters, I must refer to someone else. But he would do it himself, and he would refer his muridin for fiqhi matters, and refer to him. See the balance. So, one person used to be there at the hands of Shah Abdul Quddus Sahib Rahmatullahi. Shikhi matters, he would go to Jalaluddin Thanesi Rahmatullahi. Right. Now, this Jahazat Jalaluddin Sahib Rahmatullahi, initially he wasn't into Tasawwuf and the Batin, etc., not into Suluk. So, when this person would come to him, he would say, Tumare Nachanya Sheikh Kesin, Tumare Nachanya Peer Kesin. Your swinging peer, Nahodi. Your swinging peer. That's making a zikr or whatever, and he's swinging. Sometimes, you know, that ecstasy you can't contain it, and you're swinging around. So, your swinging peer, Nahodi. Now, he can't tell him anything because he needs the direction, direct of Indian. What was he needs? He says, hey, don't swear my Sheikh, you make it upset. If you get upset, then who's going to guide me in my fifty matters? And he doesn't want to report it to his sheikh as well, his peer as well, because he doesn't know what the peer, how the, what the peer will respond. How will he respond? He doesn't know. But now one day he couldn't take it. 
when he couldn't take it, he went and related the whole thing to the peace stop. See, I go to this person here for my maslas, and he's telling me, Tumara Nachanya Peer Kese. You're swinging Peer Nauzi. Prophet Sahib of Qudus Sahib Rahmatullahi told him, Alright, now if he, if he tells you that word, if he says you the word, he must tell, what he must say? He must say this much, that he is Nachanya and the other people are also Nachanya. If he ever asks you again, this is the answer he will give, that he swings and he will swing you also around. So he went to the Shah Jalaluddin Sahib for some masla and Shah Jalaluddin started him again. You know, people like some little bit of excitement. Incitement, people like that. They said, no, I, I spoke to my chef, the chef says, Khud Nachanye or Dusre Kubi Nachate. Uh, he also swings and he can make you swing as well. The moment he said this now, he can't stop swinging. Can't stop swinging. So he just, just calm down. He can't stop it. He had to come to Shabdul Qudus Sahib Rahmatullahi and he became one of the leading Khalifas of Shabdul Qudus Sahib Rahmatullahi. He became such a great person after that in his Zamana. This is now Shabdul Qudus Sahib is about four centuries away, four or five centuries away. Right. So this, this Jalal Jin Sabi became such a great person afterwards. See, this was half the good. There was, there wasn't, it wasn't strong. Your, the goodness that comes out of you is proportionate to the goodness of the heart. Remember. The heart must be very good. See, the, the goodness of the body is proportionate to the goodness of the heart, spiritually and physically. Heart is good, spiritually and physically, everything goes well. That's why Allah says, Qadaflaha man tasakka. So anyway, we're talking of the Shah Jalaluddin Tanesi Rahmatullahi. So they have the fears, you know, you have yearly Ansar fair and all that right <coughs> though the fair is very unfair right and I say it's very unfair because the souk you know, the souk was named after Jews souk banu qaynuka souk ukaz either after some mushrik or some Jew now why is there to pull the Ansar's name to say Suk Ansar? I say, is it fear of that? Very unfair. That means they're trying to show the Ansar's and all that they're only business people. Why? Their whole life was in, in jihad, right? The whole life was in striving for deen. Right? In the midst of the jihad, uh, one person, <coughs> He is launching the attack. The whole Roman Roman army is looking after their fortress, right? And one Muslim, before the battle can start, he went, he launched the attack. When he launched the attack, one single handed, one person said, Yo, hey, mah, mah, la tulku bi aidikum ila tahluka. Don't throw yourself into destruction. So Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu anh said, Why? That's not the reason for revelation. This hadith wasn't brought on that, on that occasion. This hadith was about us. This hadith in the of Ansar. Abu Ayyub Ansari is one of the leaders of Ansar, right? This hadith Rasul Pakistan had mentioned was, it was directed to us. And how was it directed to us? It was directed to us like this. That when Islam had made numerous victories and ground winning and things were getting settled, a lot of wealth was pouring to Medina Munawara. So we began to discuss amongst ourselves that we did enough for Islam now. Let's just attend to our businesses. Our farms, our businesses, let's attend to that. Because we did enough for Islam. So on that occasion this verse was revealed, La Tulku bi aidikum ila tahluka, don't you contribute towards your own destruction. That means attending to your farm and business, etc., and not too concerned about being, is 
throwing your ha- throwing yourself into destruction and your security your prosperity is the effort for deen you know uh, explain the class the class we go doing the kitab ul jihad is doing coinciding at the right time afghanistan and jihad is going on so it's a nice chapter the coming in so everybody is interested i'm getting interested they're getting interested so i told the class i looked all the hadith I won't say all now, but whatever I've seen, by the grace of Allah Ta'ala, but I saw the most reward, the greatest reward was for Rabat. So Rabat, what is Rabat? Rabat is guarding the Islamic frontiers. Right. That's the most reward, greatest reward. I was so supposed to talk about something else, moving in different directions, right? So then I asked him, all right, why is it that... that what is Rabat number one and number two why is it the reward for Rabat is the greatest so Rabat is to look after the frontiers of Islam and the reward for it is the greatest I say why it is the greatest because even though they say that the three deeds right Sadaqatun Jariya Waladun Salihun Yad'ulahu or ilmun yuntafa'u bihi they say the reward for this tree is continuous right by style sadqa jariya is continuous but this one year rabat janmu lahu ila yawm al qiyamah it carries on right till the day of qiyamah so now they are comparing the muhaddisin are comparing right sadqa jariya hadith with rabat hadith so what's the difference this is sadqa jariya continuous rabat also continuing but right till the day of Qiyamah so the difference they find is Sadaqatun Jariyatun right that thing stops as that good work stops right you put up a madrasa Allah will allow it to and continue till the day of Qiyamah but the day that madrasa stops your sawab is dried you put up a well right the day the well dried, the sawab is stopped. That's what the Muhammadisin say, right? And I like to go by, by their statement, rather than saying our, our own things, rather go by their statement, because uh, they've got uh, treasures of knowledge. We just got, we're just quoting here. Nothing but quoting. What? No, there's, there's no semblance. Our knowledge is no, no, no semblance. Right? And when you talk of the Rabat, then that reward carries on till the day of Qiyamah. Right. Doesn't stop, no stoppage. Now, then I ask the class, alright, there's two things, one they ask me and one I, I explain. So, that Rabat, the person that is looking after the Islamic frontier, so what is the effect of his guarding the frontier? I said, every Islamic activity that is taking place is because of his looking after the frontier. Jamaat are moving, right? So there's madrasas, Salis are coming for namaz, children are going to maktab, etc. It's because of what? It's because of this person looking after the frontier. I asked you if the frontiers weren't guarded, would they have been able to move, actively move around? They're looking after that. So every Islamic activity is taking place. Namaz, parda, no woman is harassed. Everything is done too perfect, right? Because of these people here. So they're doing two things. One is they're looking after the Muslim. And number two is they're preserving Islam. They're looking after Muslims and they're preserving Islam. Aren't they doing that? So that's the essence of life, that you preserve Islam and look after Muslim interests. The third is then promote Islam, right? So what they're doing, what a great work they are doing, right? So all the activity that is taking place, this person has got a good share in it. So his reward carries on. Allah Qurtubi got about 10 hadiths for these people here that do the rabat, right? But that reward is such that one day of the rabat is like one month roza, one month fasting. Number three, the third reward is yu'manu and fattanil anil fattan. That means, he's going to be saved 
from all the trials of the grave. Manu Ali is Every trial is gone. That means he was just die and he's gone. He must, he's just die and he's gone straight to Jannah. No problem in between. He's gone straight. So now one student, quite a good, good child, so he said, but, Mua, but now, anyway, for us to get this thing, man. Because you can't, you can hardly see an Islamic country. You can hardly see an Islamic country. When you don't see an Islamic country, then which borders you going to be guarding? The reward is immense. And I say, in my understanding, I haven't seen a hadith, I haven't seen a reward as great as this. Right? So great is the hadith. So great is the reward. Right? Because your reward is continuous. Imagine, from now to Qiyamah, they don't know how many years it will take. Right? But your reward is not stopping. So he's, I can see now, Bishara is too depressed now. Well, anyway, can, we, can that, we get that reward. So I explain to Muhammad Shafi Sabra, he's right, called a hadith, right? It's in Mishkat and other kutub of the Sunnah as well. He says, do these three works and you will get that reward. One is, is Vagul Wudu'i al Makari. Right? Doing a complete wudu, even though it's difficult at times, right? Doing a proper wudu. Now, in the winter it becomes a little bit difficult. That you're doing the wudu complete. Complete means do the sunnah and don't waste. Don't waste. See that, like many times, you've got the tap running, washing your face. So even the water getting wasted. So see how you economize. Do it right. Do it sunnah. Don't, don't undo the wudu. Do it right, but without wasting. Is bagul wudu yal makari. Do it properly. And see that it's complete. And you'll get the same reward of Rabat. The second is, one tizaru salati baad salat. You read one namaz, you're just waiting. It's next namaz, when is it going to come? Next namaz, when is it going to come? You're just waiting for it, isn't it? There's more homages. Yeah, no, I can't, something I want to discuss, I can't discuss it now. You're just married now, right? So, now, one day, you had one day, alright? And then she, that's the tradition now, she must go to the mother's place, whatever, and see everybody. But the husband, what is waiting for now? Raat kap aayegi. Doesn't he wait for that? Raat kap aayegi. It's gonna come, it's gonna come. He doesn't he wait for that? He's, I'm just using him as an example, but all of you went through the same thing, right? But I, put like two pies now. All went through the same thing, right? Raat kap aayegi. And if she's not there, you can't sleep. It's turning around this side, that's it. When is she going to come? So that is the type of teen he's got for namaz. That is the teen he's got for namaz. When is the next namaz coming in? I can see Allah, Allah talk to him, make dua to him, praise him, thank him for all what he's done for me. Right? So that's the second thing. One tizaru salat ibad salat. Right? And the third is kasfatul khuta ila masajid. Steps to the masjid, walking to the masjid, right? walking, coming, going, coming, going. He didn't say, he didn't say, Kasatu Sayyarat ila masjid. Right? Did he ever say, Kasatu Sayyarat ila masjid? No, walking to the masjid. Kasatu Khuta ila masjid. So you can walk, walk by, you're not going to get these opportunities again. You're not going to get these moments again. You can walk, why come to the car? Right? Having a problem with the parking area, all that. Every step you're taking, and there's a reward. Right? But in that, remember, Salatun baad salatin la lavun bainahuma kitabun fil illihin. One, two namazes, right? Two namazes. In between, you didn't do anything wrong. Anything wrong, anything uh, vanity, pride, futile talks, uh, nothing else. Not that it was serious, but nothing that was uh, doubtful, wrong, didn't hurt anybody, you didn't get into anything for anything. Kitabun fil illihin. Your name is all recorded upstairs. In the Allah illi, your name is recorded. The highest of the high. See that? Now, then again, I went and seen the three hadith. I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, what is the common thing in this three hadith? Is Bagul Wudu al Makari, Wantizaru Salati Baad al Salah, Kasatul Khuta al Masajid. You see, 
there's a law in, 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 in uh, people talk about it explicitly in different ways in English they speak about it like this uh, uh, count, uh, look after the cents or look after the pennies and the pounds look after itself what it means and in Arabic they would say al uh, dua, right right so you look after the borders what look after the borders Borders would mean, in our context about deen, borders would refer to the sunnahs and the mustahab, etc. Right? Look after that, and your whole deen will be taken care of. The adab, you know, the things of adab. You take care of the things of adab. Namaz and all that, the sunnah is, is called the adab. In day-to-day life, that additional things that you will do for your parents or your elders, etc., that's called adab. Right? So when you will have that adab, right, then that is a protection for your entire deen. And the day you lost the adab, your whole deen, you have lost the security, gone. Now, it's such a simple thing, but, but we, don't, we don't register, right? I can call Mulana, Junaid, I can call him, right? But for an ordinary person, for him to say, Junaid, come here, it's not right. And if his children call him, then you say, be adab, only say that. But the word they use, was it the right word or the wrong word? It was the right word. But that one word makes such a big difference. What was, what was short in it? The thing that was short in it was there was no other in that. You can raise your voice and talk to your parents, you can't raise, right? And you can talk to them softly, respectfully. So you, 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 you convey the same message. But I ask you, isn't there a world of difference in both the person's address? He addressed in one way, he addressed in a different way. So what was the missing link? The adab. The adab is makes such a big difference. Now, this adab, don't consider it as, a, as something insignificant. Anything in your social life, domestic life, in your dini life, but that adab thing, that brings about the color, it brings about the sweetness. And minus the adab, they eat the body, but no sweetness. I ask you, will you ever eat a chocolate without sugar? So that sugar is like the other. Do you ever think of eating? They say, hey, give this dawah to someone else. Won't you say that? Won't you say that? So what brings about the flavor is the sweetness. And you pull out that sweetness, it still appears as a chocolate. The wrapping is there, the appearance is the same, everything, is, the texture looks like the same. But I ask you, will you eat more than one piece? Someone says, I'm very healthy for the health, you just eat one piece, but you, you can enjoy the health. What do you say that? You can enjoy the health, is, for my health this is enough. What do you say that? So the, the adab is the thing that brings about this. Now when you look at these three things, is Bagul Wudu being a poverty. You can make this first Wudu and carry on, but is Bagul Wudu al Makari. One Tizaru Salati Bada Salah. You can come in, you can rock into the masjid at the last, last hour, right? but you waiting, when is the Namaz time? See this, borders, these things that are coming at the end, you're looking after that. You're looking after that, you, you're conscious about that. And the third thing is, you can come by car, you can run and come, but you're taking small steps, respectfully coming to the masjid, going, coming, going, coming, going, coming. You're doing it in this way. And the hadith saying, Zalikumur Rabad, Zalikumur Rabad, Zalikumur Rabad. So, Allama Kurtubi Rafa says, I have got Yaqeen, if you practice this tree, you will get that reward. So I can tell the student, right, do what you can do. Are you waiting for that day, Imam Mahdi will come, and then you do this, and all. right, maybe you don't get that day, you don't, either ke rahe na udar ke rahe. What you can achieve, achieve it now. If the day he comes, then you support him as well. But now, in anticipation of that man, you're not doing anything now, isn't, isn't, isn't it a loss? This, a similar thing comes on this big night, you see? Like you got Shabbat uh, Qadr, right? And you got the odd nights of Ramadan, then you got Shabbat Barat, right? The rewards that I mentioned, right? So obviously, the greatest portion of the right is the latter portion, the last, uh, portion of the night, last two, three hours of the night, that's the greatest. But now you're not sure that you get up at that portion of the night. You may get up to see the rosa, etc. But now you don't know you'll engage in ibadat or you won't engage in ibadat. 
Now in anticipation of getting up at that portion of the night, you go and sleep in the first portion. And you delay. Something happened. You go this half an hour. Hey, I must have prayed it because tomorrow is Rosa. So all the time is gone in theory. So, what our Uliya Zulgan is what they say, by the night starts, in the big night, the night starts from Maghrib. So what you can achieve from Maghrib, achieve that. Because the field namaz, zikr, Quran says, chill out. After Isha, you can do something, do it. You got up as a lot latter portion, the noor nala noor. You've already got something, and this is, you know, tell you the top, more and more you've got. So now, in anticipation, you were loitered around, spoke about things, you wasted your time. Now, the last half, half an hour, you're trying to recoup. Uh, have you got what you're supposed to be getting? So we're talking about dua, right? And I'm showing you this uh, Ibrahim al-Islam's dua. وَجْعَلِّي لِسَانَ صِدْقٍ فِي الْآخِرِينَ Imam Ghazali says, provided it is supported with the three conditions. You're not bragging and boasting of yourself, not despising. But I want a good name not to despise, not to, uh, dis- not to despise, not to boast and brag. Hmm? I have, to give, I have to give one talk somewhere, sometimes back, right? So, I said, by advice, don't you despise. What? Advice, don't despise. Well, Abdul Rami Sahib heard that word, and he, what he said? He, he's, Muhammad is like very natural. No takallu, you know. As it is, so it's very easy to get along. He says, what? Ma, what did you say? He said, advice, but don't despise. Advice, don't despise. You despise the person, have you got anything? You ran him down, did you get anything? You smashed him, you got anything? You didn't get anything. So advice, but don't despise the person. Inna Allah la yu'ti bil rifqi ma la yu'ti bil unf. As Aisha was very upset, very, very upset. As a Yahudi, they said, uh, been vulgar to the Rabbi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Been vulgar, that vulgarity was very upset. And she said, Wa alaykum al-Sam, wa alaykum al-Wala'anakullah, wa ghadabullah. So she was upset, and it was right for her to be upset. But Rasulullah has stopped her. Yaqa wal unf. Don't use this aggressive, don't be aggressive. Don't be aggressive. مَا يَكُونُ الرِّفْكُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا ذَانَهُ وَلَا يُنْزَوْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا شَانَهُ But when this uh, humble, soft approach, a good approach, in a situation, it beautifies the whole thing. But if it's pulled out, then it spoils everything. But I ask you, for the vulgarity, wasn't she right to use that approach? But then to Rasul al-Paksas and Ya Rasulullah, didn't you listen to what he, what, what he said? Yes. But didn't you listen to my answer? My answer was, Wa'ali, finished. So, whatever it was, it's clear, it's class, right? But I didn't have to stoop down and become vulgar. I just said, Wa'ali, class. The old story ended up there. So you, you advise, but you don't despise. And this, this is a long, long story now, right? I won't, miss, I won't complete these three points of Imam Ghazali Ramzali. The second point Imam Ghazali Ramzali says, <coughs> that you're asking was Ali Disana Sidqin Fil Akhiri, right? So the second point that he mentions is provided there is no mudahana. Right? Not making any compromise in the, what? So, uh, I want a good name. So, in looking for a good name, I have to compromise, you know, make things work like. Otherwise, uh, I won't achieve a good name. You know, I will lose my name. So just to secure my name, I would have to compromise some way or the other. Right? Uh, someone is giving a talk, right? Someone is giving a talk, and he's a uh, he's a good speaker, right? Or a good speaker, and someone is now videoing him. So, in a respectful way, right, you stop the video, it's not permissible. Right? Now, it can be that to get a good name, I say, now, you know, I want to be a, a person that everybody respects, that everybody likes and all that, 
Let me compromise on it, on this thing here. I won't talk about it, but I won't speak about it. My name will be protected. So now this type of compromise is not right. See, the compromise, in this type of a situation, you're compromising for a deeny thing. And a deeny thing when you are compromising, then it's not right. So you see, the first was that uh, you don't uh, uh, brag and boast about yourself, then you don't despise the person, and the last is this, that you don't compromise. Any deen thing, you don't compromise. In earning a good name, you didn't compromise any principle of deen. Then for such a person, it's alright. And the third is this, that you're not doing this for any type of a material reward. I'm asking for a good name, not for a material gain. So then why is it, why is it commendable to make this type of a dua? So it's commendable to make this type of a dua for this reason, because, see, you've got a good name, right? then people will see that you are a good name. When you are a good name, then they will emulate your works. Your examples that you left behind, they will emulate. Right? When they will emulate your examples, then who is reaping the reward? You reap, you, reap, you reaping the reward. You had a good name, not for any type of worldly benefit, no, not worldly advantage, purely for deen. It's only for deen that you got a good name, then People hear the good name, if they hear the good name, they want to follow. Right. Yeah. You hear of a brand, and it's a popular brand, for a good brand, yeah. Woolworth, you also want to buy it. It's got a good name, right? You just buy it. Just close your eyes, go there and buy it. Why it's Woolworth? Why it's a good name, right? It doesn't happen. Right. So, similarly, they see, alright, this is a good alim now, it's a good person, right? For a good name. So, say, close your eyes and follow him. Don't they say that? But when they follow him now, who is going to get the returns? He'll get all the, all the rewards you're going to get. If he left a good name, a good legacy, so they're going to be following him. When they follow him, his rewards will increase. So this is not coming, not going against the verse, تِلْكَ الدَّعُوا الْآخِرَةُ نَجْعَلُوهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ See that عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ That supremacy on this earth here, yeah, worldly name. Not a worldly name. He wants it for the reason, for the akhirah. But his, his name shines in the akhirat, people emulate him, but he's alive or he's gone, his rewards are returned. But then he must see to it that he doesn't mess it up in these three conditions. No boasting, no bragging, etc. No material gains. And number three, there is no type of compromise in this. Then it's permissible, otherwise not right. So now look again at this dua that he made. I spoke about it on Friday. So the first thing that he asked for, so before the dua, I would say, that, see, Allah Allah makes it happen. You made the effort, but you can't rely on your effort. You have to rely entirely on His mercy. See, when Dawud is making dua, وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ What? وَأَدْخِلْنِي Just by your grace, Allah Ta'ala, admit me into the righteousness. Not because of my greatness, my ingenuity, my striving, I said, no.